So right now I'm doing a little bit of a rebuild um, on the rat rig. I've got my motor adjusters installed here. Uh, these were working really good. I had them printed out of PLA before, so now everything is ABS, uh, ABS quarter plates, ABS XY carriages, basically um, all the parts now I've printed in ABS with my other printer and just kind of doing a, a refresh. I got a new uh, linear rail. This one has a little bit of preload uh, just to get rid of any little bit of slop that you sometimes get uh, with the cheaper linear rails that also sometimes vibrate and make noise. Mine was sort of making a buzzy sound on certain speed moves, which is getting really annoying. So I just decided to replace this. Um, and this one is 100% um, uh, stainless steel rail and the carriage. Uh, so I don't get any surface rust, which I sometimes get uh, just because I live in a coastal city. It's not bad. I just wipe it off and it's fine. Uh, but anyway, I'm getting ready to put the carriage back on here, then basically reconnect all the belts, tension it, and uh, probably try a new hot end, which I'll get into in a little bit. So I decided to try this K1 Pro hot end. I uh, saw it on Amazon. It looked like it was pretty similar to a Dragon, but with a cylindrical heater um, and about 40 bucks less. So that was pretty attractive. Um, you know, kind of looking at it, I was, like, I was like thinking it's probably the same uh, heat sink or, or I guess overall um, aluminum structure as the, the outer structure, same as the Dragon, so it should fit pretty close to what I have now. Um, it's got the same extended, um, I guess, heat hot end or heater block. Um, so it looked pretty, pretty similar other than the cylindrical uh, heater and the increased uh, printer thermistor. Not that I'd go up to 300, but it's there. Uh, and they do show it being um, mounted in uh, one of the Voron hot ends. So it's probably overall pretty close to the same length. So I decided to take a try on this and bought it and here it is so immediately opening up um, packaging is real similar to the uh, last hot end I got from Fetus so it makes you wonder like all these things are made in Japan so they're probably um, all made I wonder if they're all made in the same factory so take the thing out here um, got the hot end and it does look pretty close to the dragon which I have here which is that's good news probably a little bit longer it looks like it's almost the same but I don't know if you can see that it's barely longer maybe by a few millimeters so I may need to adjust my duct once I get that in there um, let's see if I can take this out yep these come off there. Oh, cool. So this top piece comes off just like I thought, and it's pretty much the same thing other than the flat front and back. Um, the cylinder part, there's the hot end. Let me look at that there. Um, one thing you got to do is make sure all these guys are tight. Sometimes when you get these out of the box, um, all this stuff isn't tightened down. This one, actually it feels like it is. So that's good. So I am gonna probably, let me see here. Here's the carriage I got for, that this came out of. So it should, oh yeah. Fits in there, I mean it's, Almost same thing. So let's see what else comes in the package here. Got a little manual. Yep, so it shows that it comes apart there. Uh, one thing that was advertised with this is it says it comes with a hardened steel nozzle, which I don't typically like these because um, they don't heat as well as a brass nozzle. They don't transmit heat as well. So I, I noticed I was having to hike up the temperature 
and then I was still wasn't getting as good layer adhesion as with the brass nozzle, so I may change that out. We'll see, maybe I'll run some tests and see how it works. So I went ahead and replaced this nozzle and noticed that it was actually a knockoff CHT design with the, like the, it splits up the path to melt more filament. So I guess that's a bonus. Take that for what it's worth. It's a uh, hardened steel and got the additional three paths for the uh, filament to split up. So it, I did use it for a couple of days. It seems to work fine. Um, end up just replacing it with a brass nozzle. But uh, so that's just something else that you can uh, check the box for this type of extruder. All right, so got basic tools, screws. Screws here, they don't look like they're stainless steel. Not a big deal, but I don't know. Maybe I'll swap them with the other ones. And got these little springs. Oh, this must be for the down here. I don't know why those springs would be there. I don't know where you would put those. Maybe it's for some other kind of mounting deal. And of course you got wires. Uh, one thing that's cool, the, the wires on this, it comes with pigtails, so you don't have the cartridge style like here. So I am gonna have to probably add a, a plug. Maybe I can depin this, maybe not. But I'll probably have to repin this so I can use it. Uh, my wiring harness, unless I feel like rerunning the whole cable. Maybe I'll do that, we'll see. So this is the carriage I'm going with. It's uh, basically a modified uh, VZ bot carriage that is printable with uh, clamps on the back and also the front here. Um, it uses uh, sort of a, a um, typical a hot end insert. So this one I have for a dragon and it would basically fit right in here. And I just add an extra point of attachment at the bottom just for added stability. Uh, and then the back here, this uh, post is actually a separate piece that's screwed on here. This will be for the adjustable uh, cooling fan mount. You'll be able to slide this up and down just like the other, the standard VZ bot. Uh, and stop on the side here basically designed this so that I could shim it in or out with a small little plastic part if I need to bring this out. And um, probably redesign this bottom piece. I was initially going for a end stop on the bottom, but with the uh, the rat rig, uh, the, the uh, MGN rails are on the bottom of the extrusion, so wouldn't have a proper mounting point for that. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and use the part that I have off the front that I've been been using for the uh, cookie probe uh, but anyway uh, here it is it's ready to be uh, installed um, probably eventually go to the proper aluminum version but just wanted to try a printed version for now um, just to get it on right away so here's the CAD version of the um, the carriage that I had modified so it's it's basically a printed version of the VZ bot with extra clamps here for the belts front and back. Uh, I've got the hot end kind of like cartridge or carriage so that like if you remove the top plate you see how it it sets into the front plate and it's held in by these two fasteners that would be there. And then also since I've got the K1 hot end modeled in here I'm using a um, new uh, new sort of duct that um, kind of looked at a couple of different ducts. Most use like kind of a fang or the, you know, typical style duct that you see that I also modeled over here like this one. Uh, but I tried this one after looking at the new Prusa Mark IV and saw that they were doing 19 minute benches with pretty good quality. And for that, you need pretty good cooling. So I looked at the fan duct they were using and it was actually really simple, just sort of like, um, kind of like a wedge, like 45 degree angle in the path that was shoved the air down. And what I'm thinking is um, this lets the air comes off this wedge and just probably gets turbulent right here, maybe swirls forward around here. But anyway, I've, I've tested this so far and it works really well. So um, it's actually worked better than a couple of the other fan ducts I tried. I uh, haven't tried this one yet, but I think part of my issue with uh, some of the other fan ducts is that the the actual outlet size 
is not large enough to, um, you know, put put for, put enough air on onto the part. So I've, I made this one with a little bit larger ducts. Now we'll be testing this soon, but right now I've been using this duct and it's working really well. I'm not sure what to call it. Maybe a spade duct. It looks like a spade or some sort of garden tool or spatula, whatever. I'm not sure. Anyway, but um, I'm going to have the model up uh, so y'all can download it and, um, you know, modify it if you need to. Also on mine here, I've got two different back plates. I'm using these uh, 6015 fans. Uh, and they work really well. They do flow more air as long as you buy buy the right one. There's like a couple of different 6015s that I've I've come across, and most of them don't really move much air. Um, but this one, and the, you just gotta have to be careful which one you buy. It looks like a 5015 with this sort of protrusion, uh, like sort of like a the fan has like an extension where it blows the air. Some of the other ones is just flat right across here. And those don't flow as much air from what I found. Uh, anyway, I do have both. I have the 6015 mount and the 5015 mount. So if you do want to use the 5015 fan um, that most people have, it's it's there. So you don't need to worry about it. Also, uh, being based on the uh, BZ carriage, uh, it contains the same uh, hole pattern for um, inserts, uh, threaded inserts, and or um, or M3 nuts, uh, so you can use any of the various extruder adapter plates here that um, that are for the various uh, different extruders. Like this one shows, like for the Orbiter, Sherper Mini, um, or Sherper Micro, and also Sherper Mini. Uh, these are the ones that are also part of the VZBot system. Uh, so it's the same types of adapters will fit on this. Uh, this uh, carriage. Also, um, I redesigned the extruder I was using. Um, I was using the uh, sail fin, which is in one of my previous videos. So I kind of remixed that and made a version of that with a much more, I guess, compact assembly as far as the height. The height is much lower and it has a uh, top mount uh, system or orientation like a lot of the other extruders. And it's, it's pretty much the same number of parts, uh, same assembly, uh, procedure. You can uh, I'll link the video uh, that I had on the sail fin to show how that goes together. Um, and then pretty much goes all together like this. And as you can see, where the motor mounts um, back here, it's much lower. So the motor is going to be pretty much even with the the height of the extruder. This is about as tall as it goes. It's much shorter than the previous uh, sail fin extruder that I was using. Uh, again, uh, top mount, mount, so the holes uh, mounts right on top of the carriage, like a lot of the uh, newer uh, carriages, or at least like the VZ bot, uh, like to do. Uh, so uh, it should fit on a lot of different uh, uh, hot end carriages, uh, so people can try it out. Uh, I've been using it for a few months now, and it seems to be working uh, just great.